from Alpine John. Um, I come from the Netherlands and today I would like to present my work in the past uh, five years. So my work examines how our entanglements in data are perceived, understood and imagined and how these ways of thinking and imaging shape our technologies and our approach to art and the design. And I started, I started my PhD in 2012 and finished it in 2017 in the direction of interactive technologies for public art installation. Uh, during my PhD, I was mainly working with rendering motion capture data in real time and design interaction that could transform such data source into different experiences. I designed experiments that involve the visitors and the participants, such as visitors can stay together with and interact with the participatory performance. And also, visitors can play instruments or music together with the work. Or the visitors can dance together with the work. So in these cases, I have explored different connectivity between actions and reactions. And also I investigated the meaning transformation through the interactivity. And uh, since 2018, I, after I finished my PhD, I have been exploring big data and I wanted to extend the art scene beyond a particular moment and space. Uh, when we think of big data, we often see numbers, charts, graphics that are difficult to comprehend. Here is a small example. Actually, I did a small workshop at the Action Digital Arts Festival in 2021. And this is the example of visualizing the stored data of Alibaba Company from October 2014 until 2021 by collecting all public video speeches made by Jack Ma, the previous CEO of this company, and sorted the speech data, speech data and the stored data according to their same months and years. I visualized the monthly changes and the degree of increasing or decreasing the stored data through images, color changes, images rotating, rotation directions and rotation speeds. This was a very small example that I did for workshop, but from this example, I found that it's interesting to build connections between the big data, these meaningless numbers, and it's interesting the symbols or elements that pick up to represent the data. Therefore, in uh, 2019, I did an interactive installation called Standby Wing. Uh, this installation actually used machine learning models to generate the speeches from the Chinese President Xi Jinping and the uh, former previous US President Donald Trump and uh, build a virtual conversation for these two political symbols. And this work also projects the pattern of the conversation flow from the machine generated speeches and connect them with the supercharged electric power softens as a representation of human technology confrontation. The light and sound from the power softens visualize a connected information system. There are many challenges in this project. For example, I have to read all the President Xi's speeches in the past 15 years and all the Trump's the previous tweets from his Twitter that was really difficult to read this crazy two symbols uh, stuff. And also, uh, I have to pre train all the text data in these machine learning models, trying to build this uh, version of the machine for them. 
And also the most difficult part, the probabilities I have to open all the pores of this. Remove everything inside and put the electrics inside with LED or the speakers and connect them independently but inside a building systems and close the power socket back to the original how it look like and I have it. So 36 power sockets in this project. I opened everyone and installed them and then closed them. That was really a lot of a lot of work. By the way, anyway, <clears throat> and from this uh, from this project, I started to explore the details. But actually, I don't know if this uh, uh, speeches or the trees from this presence are the really uh, numbers. But for me, it's just a meaningless data. But I, I found a, an interesting way to represent or visualize the data. And in 2018, some, somehow after a few years, I was focusing on the big data. Then I moved my focus to the everyday data. And the value of the humidity, the value of, of air pressure, the value of temperature we see every day, what does this mean to us? Um, it's like uh, there's many applications that are designed to represent everyday life in ways that can help us approach or consume or understand the data as precise or accurate information. And then to figure out what these numbers mean to us, one of my approach is to embody every data into a familiar context. Here is another example. I did a full my course. I spent seven days counting duck, ducks. Half past seven in the morning, half past one during the lunch, and half past eight at night. So I, three times a day for seven days, I went to a nearby bay and I counted the ducks. How many were in the river? How many were not? How many of them are active or not active? And I try to connect their activities with the same moment as every day resident. So the, at the moment when I was next to the river, I counted the duck. I documented their activities. I also documented at that moment as a resident, I try to find the connections between these two sides. And of course, in the end, this is a um, small data visualization for the students in the course. But uh, for me, this is uh, um, it's really like a deep memory of my body. Actually, I really feel a difference between the air pressure between 1022 and 600. How my body feel like it, and my body memories about this somehow meaningless uh, the everyday data. But I see the difference, I feel the difference from the, from the familiar context in my everyday life. And, and inspired from this, uh, this small example, um, I created an everyday data installation in 2019 in this work. I explore a different data representation by moving away from accurate and precise numbers as a basis of personal narrative to achieve a more intuitive interpretation of experience in data. In this work, as a visitor the experience is connect, connected intuitively to what the data is about, not the data itself. I inspire a lot from the TV series, the Nightmare Special Edition of White Christmas. Why in this episode they present a future smart home systems. So I got a lot of inspiration from the how they how they present a future smart home. And in my work. My question is, how to visualize every data with personal narrative? For example, I use six different types of data, everyday data in this world, and their changes are always very certain range. For example, the time date is always following a linear progress. 
temperature of humidity data always changes very slowly. So temperature, for example, every hour will increase or decrease one degree, no more than that. And also some data, noise data, can only change in a very, very limited range, otherwise it can cause things. And uh, I try to frame this personal narrative in a very comparable way. Every morning at 8 o'clock, I have breakfast. I work with my dog in the same pot twice a day. I cook food every two days. I turn to video streams every night after work. And I know I always can laugh after watching trends. So both everyday data and my personal narrative shares prediction ability, flatness, and the lack of the vibration. In this work, the daily narrative was squeaked in such a way that they could be combined as a representation of types of everyday data. For example, movement and gesture from these two examples were designed for non-active data scenario and active data scenario. Also, the use of different props could help a visitor understand the narrative in seconds and connect them with data information. At the exhibition, I designed an information interface actually updated six types of data showing on my iPad. A video overview with all 65 video clips on the big screen. And also the one video clip that can present the current overview of six types of data on both the small screen and iPad, iPod touch. So this work was exhibited in a group exhibition and the visitors who were invited to bring iPod touch with them when they visited the other exhibition rooms. So this work was, uh, was for me uh, a new tryout of representing the uh, everyday data. But, uh, but somehow at the exhibition makes everything change quite slow. At the exhibition, I think the visitors they are looking for the bigger visual effects. So that's also one of my uh, practical problem is like I design for everything in life. But the once the exhibition, my work needs go to the exhibition. So at the exhibition, visitors are looking for something else that probably quite the opposite to the everyday information. Um, I don't know. I I I, I try to, to, to figure out how to how to deal with this problem. But as uh, as as the one participant yesterday said, so she found the, we need to change the identity of the artist. I really feel like that. But she said she's okay with that. But I'm not okay. I, I feel quite painful for me. It was very very difficult for me to to find the right way to present my work and to produce my work. I have other examples. Could, could explain this well. And then in the summer of 2021, I was invited to create an installation. So at that moment, there was a big flood in Zhengzhou in China, so it was, was very desperate. So I decided to focus on the environment, the data, the environment. So this is my first installation. Actually, focus on the environment, so it's a big topic. Uh, from from that moment, I, I, I start work on this topic, and uh, this installation called the three screens. Um, in the first screen, I used yearly amount of Chinese PM two point five emissions between nineteen seventy and two thousand fifteen as data source. So in China's case, the PM directly generated almost half of the total amount of the PM2.5 emissions every year for their heating and electricity. What you see on the first screen are the photos of Berlin from three different cities, Wuxi, Beijing, and Shanghai, which were collected, collected specifically for this installation. That's a city photo for 24 hours. And the pollution data is used to select the brush and paint over the city views. Their traces draw down and shapes how cities look like. 
and the design of the installation also project the lively images from the visitors onto the brush and connecting the impact from the local concern in general to individuals. The signal screen uses a heat content within the top 700 meters of the world's oceans between 1955 and 2020 as data source. The data actually is very simple and unsurprisingly. So the ocean heat content has been climbing up year over year. But I build a small scale bedroom inside a prison compartment of a very normal fridge. So when the power, the, the fridge power is shut down, a certain automatic process is filled and over 800 images are moving forward on the screen. This link to the visualized difference in data between years of warming oceans. For the interaction, actually machine learning is used to de detect the visitor at, at the exhibition and connect with the density of the content that the visitors can see from the, from the screen. For the third screen, the total amount of Dutch export of the recyclable waste and the export destination between 2010 and 2018 is used as a data source. There are nine countries worldwide that receive over 80% of Dutch household waste. And I focus on the five main types of Dutch waste that are exported. The matter, textile, plastic, combustion waste, and paper. The installation shows an abstract map representing all the countries involved in the waste export business. Images of the waste fly from source, it's like from the Netherlands, to the destination country on the screen, and leaving a black trace in the, in the nearby area of destination countries. And in the installation, the presence of the visitor is captured and it influences the way waste is animated on the screen. So this is my, my first installation actually use the environment data and try to do something with environment issues. And after this project, I was wondering what we can do after seeing the data. I'm not happy with just visualizing the data. So what's the point? So what do we can do? How we can take action? What's the next step? And therefore, in the early of 2022, I began another actually environment related data project called the first 100 days and try to look beyond the data visualization. This project involves I collect, I collect, document, and recycle my own personal waste for the first 100 days in 2022. So uh, this is a really painful process. So I have to document every piece of my everyday waste for 100 days. And my family also sacrificed a lot because we have separated our eating and the food and cooking to, to try to be precise with just my own waste. And I try not to eat outside and try to just cook myself to make sense of the real amount of the waste that I produce every day and what I buy every day. And there's a process that is centralized around the self-awareness and it involves tracking daily waste output. That's uh, uh, each piece of waste every day I produce has its final profile of it. And, uh, uh, and uh, in the end, uh, there's a <coughs> solo exhibition and the this project, this waste, my personal waste project, explores different art forms to present the results, such as that mounted with the thousands of the photographs, the videos, and interactive installation. Also, there are pieces of the physical waste and sorted pictures. So, actually, from this, you could see I how often I use toilet paper, I use toilet paper a 
lost at home life. <laughs> and how many coffees I drink every day, how many like a, a different types of coffee. So which kind of food I eat every day. So normally I don't eat anything at night. And so which kind of food I use and in the one hundred days, how many toothpaste I use for the one hundred days. So all these kind of uh, um, information actually when you saw the data. You could see a lot of the, something else out of this project and this process. And also, I use the AI technology to predict my future waste. After this, uh, after this uh, project, I, I have two feelings. One is uh, 100 days the waste is not enough. So I started another 100 days in this year because I really wanted to hear if it, 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 it is data, data set could be used by other designers or artists and then the 100 days of my personal data was like less than 1,000 one pieces of the, of the waste. I really didn't produce a lot because I, I, I actually don't eat too much every day. And then I start another 100 days, and actually today is the 24th of February. It was in the middle of this 100 days. This is the piece of the waste from yesterday. So I carry this in my photo studio with all the documentation equipment, equipment with me to the cycles, my whole luggage was full of this shit. It was really difficult to, to document this traveling and the, and I really try to not to be outside and to try to, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's difficult the way you are traveling. And the uh, second thing is, uh, one thing is I want to continue it as a long-term project. So this is second year. I don't know how many years I can continue in the future. I tried, I, I think it, it would be cool if I could continue 10 years for 100 days. To document my own ways to make it as a really big as a data set, as artists and designers can use it for their own project or, or researches. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I try. And the second thing is uh, because I myself feel really makes sense to look at the waste. And uh, the process is painful, but just because this, through this kind of a pain, I I really changed a lot of my, my, my behavior. So, so for example, I almost stopped eating meat anymore. I, I, I'm a meat lover from Asia, you know. It's, I, I cannot uh, stop eating meat. I, I cannot eat meat. And one day I actually stopped eating meat, but actually I did. It, it, it's it's a really kind of a behavior change for me, and this self-awareness is raised during the process. And I feel Focus, try to pay attention to your daily ways to make so much sense. And I wanted to not just make it like a personal awareness, just, but bring this kind of impact to a community. And back to yesterday, this four vectors, uh, the so from self to self, and from the uh, collaborative community. So I built an archive. This archive is an extension of the, my personal waste project first 100 days and through this archive it designed a way that we can scale from single person waste data collection to the group dynamics of collecting waste data in a community. That's my purpose to build this website. And this project explores the interface to a virtual environment supporting multiple users and uh, try to encourage and facilitate long-term engagement with this archive. So the interface, including the real-time personal waste data visualization and the future waste prediction to support the micro actions and the reaction toward the environment concerns. And also extend the ways in which the user the waste data are represented for each other. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, there are sort of kind of the problem. So, when, when, my, uh, when people are using, using this archive to document their waste. 
I did an interview after two and three weeks, so how many people still would come back to this website to document their waste? So 10% of people in Spain. So many people, they told me they are so busy. They, they are so busy in their working hours, they forgot, they cannot remember what they eat. So how could they remember to document their, their waste? They are longing with longing for meetings the whole day, how could they remember what actually the waste they threw away. And also the people who have big family, like two or three kids in their family, has so many waste every day. And then they they really cannot do it like every day to, to, to document. Although this interface I really designed in a way easy for people to actually input the data just uh, just by selecting the type of waste, select the how heavy it is, select the number of waste, but still somehow to, to engage people in a long term way to, to hold them to hold them to on this kind of archive and, uh, and motivate them to do the same thing a long term time scale. This uh, seems quite very difficult for designers a lot to do this. And then I have a really kind of struggle moment to how to continue this uh, this topic, and then I I had an opportunity to design something for the children. I didn't put the whole bunch of the children project here, but that's a, that, that's a little long story because I was. Uh, I, I, I had commissioned the project for the Cherry Festival, and then I thought if adults cannot work for this uh, uh, environmental concert project, so why not design something for the Cherry? Probably kids, they, they are not as busy as adults, so probably they can do something and they can change their parents as my original purpose. So I designed the uh, ecosystem, interactive ecosystem for the kids in 2021. That's the first installation. And the last year was the second one. And this year I put the third one for the children. And back to the topic we just had. And uh, it's once you start, once you start to work with children, and on the topic of like a environmental concern, this kind of big and abstract topic, which means that you are not alone as a, as a designer. You give your uh, control of the project away, so you have to deal with or co collaborate with the school <laughs> parents. You have to really understand that how the kids they are thinking and doing, and then you have to work with other institutes who can support you to organize the workshop or the activities. So you really change your identity of the artist and the designer. I was not uh, happy with this. I I. It, it took me some time to get used to, to a new role of the artist in a project like this. And also, um, communication is not my, my, my strengths. I hate communication. I like to work alone, just uh, like, uh, like we are alone. But somehow, uh, the com communication is so important in this kind of collaborative uh, project. Uh, I have to talk to a lot of people and a lot of meetings and then nothing comes out, you have to accept that. And then you have to accept the project goes to a long way. It's like, a, it's not like a one month project, probably half a year, one year, everything happens very slow. I, yeah, it takes me some time to get used to it. And also to, to forget my expert professional profile in a project and to give the decision, the decision to other people. I couldn't decide anything anymore in this kind of the project. That was painful, very painful for me. Anyway, this project uh, is still continuing and, uh, and I know 
how it would look like it, and also the also the ecosystem design for children is here. Uh, is the service system that designed for children and also um, really like go to the go to the state. I am not the design of final installation for the exhibition of visitors or kids can only play for minutes or hours. I'm not designing a workshop just uh, just the last for a few days or a few weeks. I'm really considered to design the tours or activities or kind of the uh, kind of outcomes that can 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 stay longer or can go to the long lasting uh, kind of the loop and the kids will come back and visit like to come back this kind of the idea and also uh, yesterday the Sales Institute is. Uh, uh, sustainability is so hard for some institutes to to consider because the funding funding is uh, always like it the, 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 the has time limitations. That's half a year or one year. The institutes they are they cannot focus on sustainability. I had uh, just a meeting conversation last week with the institute in the Netherlands. The, 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 the manager of the institute exactly the sustainability. Is their keywords, but that's the only one I saw so far in, in the past ten years. Really considers sustainability as their keywords to actually how they support artists, which kind of project they select, in which way they organize all the programs. The keywords, the priority is sustainability. So I I was really amazed by this woman. Whatever, and then <laughs> maybe it's, uh, there's another uh, also the long term project that I started in 2019, I think. It's about the personal maintenance and care. Probably quite relevant related to this uh, this program and this project. Um, uh, since 2019, I have been working on a project focused on personal dating and caring called the series B Death and Furniture. And this project started from my very young story. I will make a... And uh, young, uh, she is my grand. She was born in Northeast China in 1990 and lives and works in Shanghai. Uh, she holds the beautiful wish of having a better life in the and however, she is living with an overloaded working schedule as most Asian young people and then 24 hours every day, seven days every week. Her clients can capture her at any moment to solve the problem for them. Um, young the personal life is overwhelmingly shaped by her work and there are millions of young people like young working non-stop Shanghai and other Chinese cities following a 96 or 007 the working schedule. And um, yeah, because uh, because uh, she uh, visited me in 2019 in the Netherlands. She just uh, went for a holiday in the Netherlands for 10 days. But I was really not happy with her because uh, at any moment she was uh, trying to reply her client's message and always need a response to the clients even in the holiday and then I I, I asked her why not just uh, put your work away just uh, try to enjoy the, your holiday and then this probably is like a in the Netherlands, how people work is like after 5 p.m. They, they will never open their working email. But I, I don't know if you can make your if you are working in China, or I see in Japan, or Korea, or Taiwan, or Hong Kong. And then you, you have to respond to your clients at any moment. Otherwise, your boss will call you like all the time, and 10 times 
in Rome and in women's response to Rome. And then I I did an interview. Uh, I did an interview to her to ask her some question, something like, "What's the value? What's the value of your life? Why you are living? What you are living for?" And I don't know. Probably, if you see the the, 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 the text, you would know to earn more money, try to work less. That is like basic needs for her. So after this, after this, I was wondering how could I design for for this kind of situation? How could I design kind of the caring? But I don't call it caring. It's like a healing moment for, for, for the people who are under the working pressure. So isn't my I started this project for looking for the little healing moments in an everyday context. So for me, it's something like when you put your hands inside the rice, when you when you just uh, um, rest your body against the against the wall or kitchen corner during a COVID break. When you are actually, this is a very minimal, almost mindless thing to do, but it feels like a short stop of rest moment. So this is the, where I start. I start to find out this kind of the healing moment in everyday life and try to design with this kind of the moments or create this kind of moments in a working environment to let people to have this short stop and not like you completely rest in the sofa or just like a second in, in the process of working and try to let you mindless for a while, stop for a while. This is like a starting point, but then the problem is how to define a living moment. And also, whether it is same for everyone, which is also the challenge because I feel healing, you don't feel, and we are so different from person to person. And also, the, uh, the healing moment is also probably changing all the time from time to time. And, uh, and also, when you design healing, it requires bonding a project, a project, a project. So the so bonding, anticipation, and adaptation. So a healing moment needs a trigger, and the awareness of the healing is needed. And the moment itself should have a short face of capturing the person physically and mentally, and then the face of holding them in this place, and finally then the short face of releasing them back to the everyday life. And uh, um, the healing moment also is the form of the break. Something that temporarily hold us and let us go again after a while. So for me, this is all the design challenges in the process. So I, what I should design to create this moment always can attract people come close and do something with this design. And then they would come back, they would come back again, or they would often with this, what kind of things can you engage people in this kind of the long term effect, the long term the time scale? And I, my approach is to is to work with the uh, biosignal data. It's like your personal data. For example, I use this uh, uh, heartbeat, the biosignal data that's to use to measure the stress. So this kind of data can measure stress. Even before we feel we are under the pressure. And also, during the healing moment, this shifting and the sum of the human body can be measured to adapt and shape the experience. And the, after the healing moment, the other data can be used to train the technology behind the healing moment to be better prepared the next time. So my approach for this for this project is try to use this personal biosignal data to work with this kind of the healing moment. It's like a, you have your own experience according to your own unique personal biodata. Yeah, but the, 
but it, it went to uh, quite a um, difficult moment. Uh, of course, the installation in the end there was an exhibition somewhere or, or some places, but I'm not uh, okay with just the exhibition for a project. I really wanted to, wanted to it can be used like in daily life, and then the back to the back to the um, the point is uh, this kind of moment is designed for what and designed for who and which kind of moment I have to really uh, define and uh, uh, I I discussed this uh, project with his my friend Yang what he saw from the from the uh, video and she said that she doesn't need any of this design it's bullshit because she just needs the high salary and the blessing work number. All these kind of things try to release her from her working pressure. Just emotion, all the design of emotion. And then it was, uh, uh, was really uh, went to the very struggle moment. So what design can do in this kind of so Actually, design cannot basically change the foundation. So the the working is the flow of working tradition in China or in Asia is like a shift at least. How design could change this foundation? No, unless there's a policy change, the policy maker to do something. But design, no. What we could do? And I was struggling there for a long time. And this project was rejected by two funding applications. First one was the, uh, when the concept was not there yet, it was rejected. The second, the second funding, I went to the last round and people asked me which kind of outcome you are expecting. I said, I don't know. I don't know. How would I know? I don't know. <laughs> How could I know they are not happy with this answer? Uh, yeah, I, I also, I, I went to this program. I, I'm looking for a kind of answer for for, for this uh, for this project. So how it would how it could continue in the future. So in which way designer can contribute to to design uh, this kind of the very big and abstract uh, topic. The environment concern is big and abstract topic. This kind of the healing moment or care also big and abstract. So what I can do is so so limited. I cannot change the policy. I cannot like a, a boss to, to, to increase her salary and ask her to to, to work less. But but that was the meaning of my of my work. And also back to the, my daily voice is collection. So many of my friends or other colleagues in Germany they feel there's no immediate feedback from the, from the um, waste collection. So you do something new every day. I save one plastic bag today. I didn't use paper cup for coffee today at all. I bring my own cup for coffee. I do something good for environment. I didn't see any feedback immediately. I didn't see anything actually uh, come out of from what I'm doing. That's why people they fear this environment concern or environment topic is so big and far away. They cannot see the something payback immediately. Not like your sports that you feel so good. You do sports, you feel good. Even if you didn't lose your way, you feel good immediately. But this uh, you contribute to the environment, nothing happened. So what? And, and probably in my whole life, I save multiple hundreds, thousands of plastic bags. Even this CO two emissions was less less than I took one airplane from the airport to Cyprus. So, 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 what's the meaning of doing this small micro action from our daily life to try to save the world and try to? Contribute to a better future. So what's the point? But I do believe, I do believe the value of doing these small things from every time. If I don't believe it, it's not meaningless to continue this project. I think uh, as a designer and an artist, I believe the meaning of doing this. But the, but the problem is how, how, how.
How to design these things? I had a long discussion last week with experts. We tried to figure out the solution, possible solutions to continue this. Also for for this healing project. So how how I would do something for 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 this work? Also this, this kind of kind of abstract actions. So one approach. One approach I was suggested by the expert that was just focus on small things. Yeah. Yeah. I already focused on very small things, but don't put the aim, don't put the purpose of your project as like a superhero. So my purpose for some years I really want to disappear as a teacher. Yeah, yeah, don't laugh at me. I, I'm just uh, really think like this. I think as designers, I have the responsibility to be a better teacher and design for a better future. I don't want to be like shit to this world. And I try to not focus on something just a little bit. I want to, I, re I really want to um, do something for the polar bear and the penguin and make their life better. Probably when I say one plastic bottle here, uh, there's a one polar bear. Could it be feel better somewhere? This is, I give myself motivation. That's like a, my personal healing moment. I feel really makes sense, but it never happened to everyone. And yesterday, after our, after our talk, I saw the sun, Sunlight at 5 p.m. was um, <coughs> sunlight almost disappeared. The moment was at the top of all of these buildings. It looked like it was, uh, every building has a pink hand on their top. I don't know if you know, if you notice, it's so beautiful. And then the sunlight went so fast. I was running follow the street to the beach, and I saw the last pink light on the on the surface of the sea. I feel it's so beautiful that nature impressed me by using its superpower of beauty. And for me, this is a really fitting moment if this kind of sunlight make all these ugly buildings look so good. But that's only happened probably for me. I see the beauty from the, this kind of tiny things, but probably you see other buildings. How, how I could Design this 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 emotional emotional feeling actually make your heart be soft and make you feel living in this shitty world is still worthwhile. How could I design that? I don't know. I don't know. Probably the aim is like expert told me. This aim is girl is too big. It's too big, and then she told me. Why not just start from food you eat? Design something with the food you eat every day. Because sustainable food and healthy food, they actually share some same elements. Once you design how people eat and choose their food every day, probably you also do something good for this environment. But then everything can be designable. And then everything is possible to control at a certain point and people can continue, but not like you define an aim is super huge and far away, a better world, a better future. But let's eat healthy, let's eat something actually good for our body. People can see feedback immediately. And also with the food is really healthy. For, for healthy is good and also for the environment is good. Let's start from this. I think that it's so boring to design something. I have to get used to it. This is another thing that I have to accept as a new role of the designer. I'm not doing something cool anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, because uh, once you do something good for the world, it's not, uh, it, it, it doesn't look cool properly at, at all. And also, it's probably not uh, good for presentation in the exhibition because probably it looks quite boring. I, I really have to get used to this. It's something actually not cool, not fancy as an exhibition. People, they don't get it. But actually, it, it probably will help for other people to understand. Okay, yeah. Um, I think my time is basically.
here. And, uh, and uh, yeah, 